Shalom, ladies and gentlemen. This is Cantor David Montefiore coming to you from deep in the foothills of the Catalina Mountains. And this was my Dvar Torah of this past Shabbat Kitetze. What did the Torah, the prophets, the Magna Carta, Shakespeare, the Constitution, and Tzvi Freeman, a chassid, have in common. Bear with me as I attempt to thread the needle of commonality. Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether to snobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more, and by sleep to say, we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. In the speech, Hamlet contemplates death and suicide, bemoaning the pain and unfairness of life, but acknowledging that the alternative might be worse. Tzvi Freeman, in his book, Bringing Heaven Down to Earth, regarding this week's Haftorah from Isaiah, Shayahu says, Quote, once again, God is vowing to sustain a world. In the words of Isaiah, he didn't create it to be desolate. He formed it to be dwelled upon. And yet he is only willing to stay in such a world because it will contain those who will give their lives for him. Svi Freeman refers to Professor Bill, an anarchist. Quote, in my formative years, one of my mentors was an anarchist. His name was Bill, a lanky, highly articulate man in his late 50s, who had held lecturing posts at several universities in the past. But now, the repercussions of his political activities had forced him to be satisfied teaching at a private tutorial college. Bill introduced me to friends of his who had fought as anarchists in the Spanish Civil War. I was 15, but managed to organize an anarchist discussion group for the Vancouver Free University. It was the best organized and longest enduring of any of their classes. Still vivid in my memory is the evening we held in the lounge of the Vancouver JCC, the Jewish Community Center. Radical politics was cool in 1971, and the couches lining the walls were crammed with listeners of all kinds. My anarchist mentor spoke, bringing the words of Prudhomme and Kropotkin and Murray Bookchin alive and relating them to the commune and collective movement that was spreading throughout British Columbia. Central government was an affront to the dignity of the human being. The natural instinct of man is to cooperate to make peace, and governments alone are responsible for war and devastation. I wish I could believe these words today, as I did then, in my innocent youth. Then, as everyone was fascinated and inspired, he threw out a simple question to the audience. How many people here, he asked, are willing to die for the cause of anarchism? Die? Cause? Eyelids blinked and faces glanced 
at one another as though someone had just told a bad joke. It was nice to talk, cool ideas. Maybe even some of us might take a few months to groove on a commune in the Arrow Lakes. But hey, die for a cause? So Bill sat down and said to him, But Bill, nothing you said advocated violence. We're not talking about overthrowing a government, just about promulgating these communes and networking with each other until the old decrepit regime dies out. If a cause has no one to die for it, then the cause itself will die, Bill answered. If a mother bear is not willing to risk its life for its cub, the cub is not viable. If a cause has no willing to die for it, then the cause itself will die. Bill was saying something the Jewish people had been saying about themselves for an awful long time. Our existence is sustained by our readiness to self-sacrifice. Remember the story of Rabbi Akiva. Before the Romans caught him, a man named Popus ben Yehuda had chided him for teaching in public, openly defying the authorities. And Rabbi Akiva replied to Popus with a fable. A fox strolled along the riverbank and saw there fish gathering in one place and then another. The fox said to the fish, why don't you flee or why do you flee from place to place? The fish replied, because of the nets that humans are casting to catch us. So the fox said, I have an idea. How about you come up here on the dry land and we will live together, just as my fathers live with your fathers? The fish replied, You are the one they call the cleverest of beasts. You're not clever, but a fool. If in the place that gives us life we are afraid, all the more so in the place that gives us death. Translation. As soon as Jews give up risking their lives for Torah, they give up their viability as a people. The same applies in a global sense today. As soon as people are deterred by terror, refraining from rebuilding where terror has torn down, failing to settle back into life where terror has brought death, they have sacrificed the fate of humanity as a whole. Human life on this planet is sustained by those who do not fear dying for it. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo did exactly that. He put his political life on the line by saying the following during the RNC's National Convention, quote, the primary constitutional function of the national government is ensuring your family and mine are safe and enjoy the freedom to live, work, learn, and worship as they choose, Pompeo said. Delivering on this duty to keep us safe and our freedom intact this president has led bold initiatives in nearly every corner of the world. Speaking with a view of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem, the old city behind him, Pompeo, also lauded both Trump's move to relocate the United States Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and recently brokered peace that normalized relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Quote, the president moved the US Embassy to this very city of God, Jerusalem, 
the rightful capital of the Jewish homeland. He said, and just two weeks ago, the president brokered a historical peace deal between Israel and the UAE. This is a deal that our grandchildren will read about in their history books. Pompeo's speech, which stirred controversy, of course, and criticism from Democrats and questions about whether it violates the Hatch Act, etc., etc. Let's take a look at our old friend Isaiah Yeshayahu in this week's Aftarah. Pasuk or Pesukim 2, 3, and 4. Widen the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For right and left shall you prevail, ki yomin usmol tivrodzi, and your seed shall inherit nations and repopulate desolate cities. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, and be not embarrassed, for you shall not be put to shame. For the shame of your youth you shall forget, and the disgrace of your widowhood you shall no longer remember. And finally, Chief Rabbi Hertz says in the Hertz Bible, in his commentary of Isaiah 54, these Pesukim 2, 3, and 4 refer to the rebuilding of Jerusalem and Zion cities that shall be repopulated. Jerusalem desolate, was like a woman forsaken. Now with the exiles returning to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, she is like a wife reunited with her husband and her children. Secretary Pompeo, as Svi Freeman said in his book, human life on this planet is sustained by those who do not fear dying for it. You have nothing to fear from those in Congress who wish to interrogate your, you by your concern for having or have not broken the Hatch Act. If anyone broke the Hatch Act, it was the former Secretary of State who insisted on trying to save the scuttled Iran nuclear deal and keep Jerusalem in harm's way. So on this Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur season, as we approach the Jewish New Year of 5,781 and the secular years of 2020-21, American Jews must ask themselves the question when they vote, do we want to live in a democratic republic or in a democratic, socialist, communist country? The latter has a very poor report card. The former doesn't jump up and down and is generally referred to as the silent majority and just runs up the flag and plays hail to the chief and looks at, in God we trust, with awe as it hopes that its citizens will keep believing in the American dream. The latter clothes itself in the utopian words of Marx and Engels, Lenin and Trotsky and Fidel Castro, promising equality but resulting in re-education, incarceration, and death. American Jews must ask themselves, where is the Torah? My Torah that I believe in. Where is it safest? In a synagogue of the Republic that believes in the rule of law as taught by the Torah? 
or in the halls of democratic socialist nihilism. Where will my grandchildren pray and play on a constant, unmolested surrounding? And if I don't have any grandchildren, where will my fellow Jews' grandchildren be safe? Tonight, on Hanukkah, on Purim, on the streets of Yamakas and Tzitzit. To be or not to be. That is the question. Shabbat Shalom.